Hey, what's happening everyone? Dom here from Lens Pro to Go and Lens Rentals. Welcome back to the channel. So not too long ago, we did a full frame versus Super 35 Cinematography Explained video, which you all seemed to like. It generated some good discussion in the comments section and it seemed to be pretty helpful. So for today's video, I wanted to do something similar where I take this whole video to explain a certain video topic and one that I think is due for some demystifying. And if you already know all about this topic, at the very least, this can just be like a nice refresher for you because it's kind of a lot of numbers to jumble around sometimes. And that's because this topic is chroma subsampling and video bit depth. And actually the term bit depth is sometimes used to describe both of these things, but in today's video I want to be sure to use the term chroma subsampling because this actually addresses the process of what's going on in these cameras and what we're going to be talking about today. Okay, so already you're like, what are you talking about? Okay, so if you've ever seen a video spec that's like 4K UHD 10-bit 422 or 1080 Full HD 8-bit 420 and you're like, what does that little three number ratio mean? Is it like the higher the numbers in that ratio, the better or something? Well, actually, yes, that's like literally how it works. But stick around because we're gonna figure out why that's the case and ultimately why this matters to you. So quick primer here. The video signal from a camera has to be compressed at some point down the line, whether that compression is taking place in camera or whether it gets compressed when you export that video file. Nothing you watch on TV or the internet or your phone or on the computer is uncompressed video. All of that at some point down the line had to be compressed and contained into a video file. And we'll talk about uncompressed or raw video in a second, but right now we're talking about that compression that's taking place in camera and that's where this little three number ratio comes from. So let's talk about this ratio. This value is a representation of how much color information is being shared within a certain sample size of photo sites on the sensor, but ultimately the whole sensor. And this information sharing going on is really vital in making that final video file a nice manageable size and faster to read. And actually tons of color information can be grouped up or shared like this while making hardly any noticeable difference to the human eye. And by sharing the color information like this, the imager can dedicate a lot more bandwidth to representing those luminance values, like for brightness, rather than chroma values, which are ultimately a lot less important to a video signal than those luma values. So that ratio, like I said, is a sample size of a certain amount of photosites that will represent how the entire imager processes color in that recording mode. And it works a little something like this. That first number is the horizontal sample size, which is always four photosites wide. Except a little confusing here, we are referencing two of these regions in this subsampling ratio, so it's actually eight photosites we're looking at, but this first number will always be four, but times two. The next number basically represents how many different chroma values can exist in this top row. And I'll give you a hint, it could only be two or four. If it was zero, this would be black and white video. And three, just don't ask about three. Three can't happen. So given that, the sampling rate could either group these four photosites into twos, which would denote a two in that middle number, or they could all get their own color info denoting a four. Now for that final number, here is when the bottom row comes in. This represents the amount of variation from the top to bottom row. You can think of the middle number of like what's shared amongst the top row, and this last number is like what's shared from the top to bottom row. And if you think about it, this value could only be equal to the middle number or zero because it can only sample as much as that previous value or not at all. Certainly not any more than the middle value because the info wouldn't be there to begin with. Don't you love this stuff? All right, so now we know what that ratio means. Let's take a look at the three sampling rates that you're going to encounter in video. 420, 422 and 444. And there are some oddball sampling ratios out there, but I'm gonna exclude those from this video because they're pretty much totally irrelevant. 
All right, so in 420, we have a sample size of four horizontal photocytes, but remember, we're referencing two of these rows stacked up. And also recall that each of these sites has its own luminance value, eight potential values in total. But in 420 chroma sampling, this will limit the chroma value across the top row to be grouped by every two pixels, thus the two. And that last number says that there will be zero variance in that sampling when we add another row. It's almost like ignoring the second row, just like copying and pasting the top row to the bottom. You could also think about this like every four photosites in a square here all share the chroma info of only one photosite. So that gives you 420 sampled video. That is really, really streamlined in terms of compression and file size, but doesn't this mean we like murdered the color coming from that 420 video? Well, actually, maybe not as much as you'd expect. I'd be willing to say that a lot of video in your life has been taken in a 4 to 0 compression ratio, and you probably didn't notice anything weird about the color whatsoever. Moving on to 4 to 2. Again, out of the four photo sites on the top row, we have four different luminance values there, but again, every two chroma values are shared. But now, this last number denotes that the sampling rate for the bottom row will vary by two photosites, allowing for an equal amount of sampling, but for an entirely different row. So comparatively, 422 is capable of reading twice the color value per sample size than 420 video. And again, you're like, wouldn't that be a massive, massive difference between those two videos? Well, the difference is noticeable, but maybe not as drastic as you'd think just given that information. And moving on to our last sampling rate, 444. So you might be able to get this one on your own because no grouping is going on here. We have two rows of four photosites, and each photosite in the top row gets its own luma and chroma values. And in the next row, this varies by four pixels. So it's a whole new set of photosites, each with their own new luma and chroma values. To each their own is what I call the 444 sampling rate. And this results in an extremely color rich video file, but also a really chunky and large video file because again, the whole name of the game here was compressing this video by taking out a lot of that color information. So like 10-bit 444 is going to be really high fidelity video, but again, it's got a lot of extra color information jammed in there. But we quickly have to talk about bit depth because this also is a major factor in how that final video is going to look. And this is when you hear those values like 8-bit, 10-bit, 12-bit, I've said a couple of these in this video so far, but you'll also see these tacked onto that video spec like I was talking about. So we already know that video cameras have a way of compressing color information within that video file to save on space and time. But a video codec can also do this by setting a certain color bit depth to that video profile which will limit the range of potential colors that that system is capable of processing. A video imager uses separate red, green, and blue pixels to create a certain color. And in 8-bit, this limits that range of possible colors that the video is capable of achieving to 16.7 million colors. And this seems like enough, right? Absolutely not. Just jumping up to 10-bit processing, that extends that color range to just about a billion different colors. And that may seem a little unnecessary, but the difference in 8-bit and 10-bit color rendering is really quite drastic. Furthermore, there are even greater bit depth recording modes out there. There's 12-bit, 14-bit, even 16-bit, and these are all capable of an insane range of colors that would allow you to make the tiniest, most nuanced changes in the color grading process. But all of these recording profiles are almost exclusively recorded externally. And you might say like, oh, well, Reds and Aries record their super high bit depth video 
internally to their cards. Well, yes, that is true, but they have insanely bulky and beefed up media that is essentially just like recording out to an external SSD. And you're like, record it internally, externally, what's the difference? Well, remember, these cameras compress video this way to save space and speed while writing the video file to a piece of media. And the standard for video media for a while now has been the SD card, which are starting to get a little antiquated now and also starting to get a little bit slow in terms of write speeds in terms of cinematic video. And thus, cinema capable cameras that still primarily record media to SD are offering higher bit depth recording modes that are only available to be recorded externally. All right, so I know that that was like a lot of numbers and math and that honestly seemed more like computer science than video techie stuff. Well, that's what we bargained for when we switched over from film to video. Really, all you gotta know is that video has to be compressed at some point down the line, whether it's right out of the camera or right before you export the video. It's really just all about having control over the color of that image because filmmaking is just all about control. All right, everybody, that's pretty much gonna wrap it up on this video, demystifying chroma subsampling and video color bit depth. And I know that got pretty heady this is kind of a lot to ingest and it might not hit you until later. You might need like a little time to like let your brain chill out. You'll be like at the dinner table later and be like, honey, I just realized what Dom said about chroma subsampling in that video. Isn't that great? And they'll be like, anyways, if you have any questions or insights about what we talked about in this video, drop a comment in the comment section and we'll start a discussion. And I know this was kind of a surface level video. There is actually a lot more to talk about in terms of video compression. So if you watched this and thought that I should have mentioned something that I didn't, definitely drop it in the comment section because I want to hear about it. Also, if you happen to like this video, hit it with that little thumbs up button down below there to let me know you liked it. And if you're not already, subscribe to the channel. And if you are the absolute rock star that is already subscribed, you can actually hit that little bell button down there and that will notify you whenever we post new content, which is every week. So take care and we'll see you in the next one.